Welcome back to Notes for Engineers. In this video we'll have a look at VM availability when a node fails inside a SimpliVity hyperconverge implementation. I've been doing a lot of work with SimpliVity and they've provided me access to a lab environment that I can play with and that I can make a mess of to show these failures. In this video I'm just going to look at a whole ESX server node failure like accidental power off or a motherboard failure or something else similarly catastrophic to an entire node. I'll look at failures inside a node, in particular spinning disk and SSD failure in a separate video, and then later I'll also look at a bigger cluster. This particular video is just going to be a two node cluster. In a later video I'll cover a four node cluster and I'll actually fail half of that cluster as well to see how it works. This video is just a two node cluster with a single node failure. The SimpliVity architecture provides a VM level storage cluster. That means that individual virtual machines are available if two of the three cluster members are available. There are two copies of the VM's files. Each entire copy is stored on one SimpliVity node. Those two copies provide a redundant storage for the VM under two of the three cluster members. The third member of the cluster is the Arbiter service that's installed on the vCenter server. In order for the VM's files to be available, two of these three items must be available, either the two data copies or one data copy and the arbiter. Of course normally all three will be available. Since we're dealing with the primary storage location for VMs, it's worth reviewing the general principles of storage. These principles are not SimpliVity specific and should be followed by any data storage system. The first imperative is to protect data from corruption. It is better to deny access to the data than risk corrupting data. Now there are lots of levels to this, but in this video the important one is that there are two copies of the virtual machine data and they should always be updated consistently. They should never have different data written to the two copies. This is really important when both nodes are actually operational, but for some reason they can't talk to one another. This is the split brain situation that we never want to have in a cluster. This is fundamentally why we use the Arbiter as the third cluster member to make one or other of those two copies of the data actually active and the other inactive. The next most important thing is to make data available. If two cluster members are available, then the VM files are available. The third priority is to store the data redundantly. Now, SimpliVity prioritizes availability above node redundancy, which is usual for a clustered storage system. This is the only way to provide high availability, is to have more copies of the data than you actually need in order to present it out. Remember that within each SimpliVity node there is hardware RAID, so the data is stored redundantly within each node, and hard drive failure won't cause data loss even if only one of the two copies of the virtual machine is available. We still won't lose data if a hard drive fails, and I'll cover that in a different video. Today we have a two node SimpliVity data center, what they call a 2 plus 0. This is the minimum for a production platform. We also have the Arbiter service running on our vCenter server. A VM is created on that left hand node, and one copy of the VM is stored on that node. The second copy of the VM is stored on the second node, and in a two node environment, every virtual machine is split across those same two nodes. The storage cluster is formed with the two data copies and the Arbiter service. Each node has a full copy of the virtual machine, and the Arbiter provides the third cluster member for every virtual machine. Remember that there is an independent cluster for each VM, although in a 2 plus 0, those clusters all look the same. So what's going to happen when things start to fail? The first failure to look at is if the Arbiter service fails. Maybe the service has been stopped, or maybe vCenter is being rebooted. When the Arbiter service goes away, we still have the other two cluster members, the two data copies. So the VM is still available to whichever node is running the virtual machine, and its data is still being stored redundantly across the two nodes. The VM stays up, but we get an alert in the vSphere client that the Arbiter service is not contactable. Restoring this service is really important, as it's a member of every VM's cluster. While losing the Arbiter does not affect virtual machines and they keep running, you really do need to bring that service back pretty quickly. Having a node fail is a little more serious. As you'd expect, Every VM on that node is lost. We're talking about power cables being pulled out of one of the nodes. Of course, we still have the Arbiter, we still have one copy of the VM files. So the virtual machine files are available to the surviving ESX server, and vSphere HA will start up the VMs on the remaining node 
just like in any HA cluster. You can see that we have the redundant you can see that we have the redundancy to recover from a major element failure in the SimpliVity cluster. <laughs> Theory's all very well. Let's see what happens when I take a real cluster and intentionally power off a host in that cluster. We start with this two-node cluster. These are two physical OmniStack nodes that are sitting in a data center in Boston. You can see that there are about 80 server virtual machines running on the two-node cluster, as well as the two SimpliVity service virtual machines, and there's one template that I've used to deploy these 80 servers. HA is configured to allow the loss of 50% each of CPU and memory, as it should do in a two-node cluster. The two hosts are configured identically, but the upper host in the list has 59 virtual machines on it, while the lower host has only 24. DRS isn't concerned by this because either of the hosts could accommodate the full workload. To make the host failure interesting, I'm going to power off that upper host that's got 59 virtual machines on it, making the biggest possible impact. I'm going to use the outer band management that's built into the SimpliVity node, and I'm going to power off the upper node. This is an immediately power off, right? no graceful shutdown, it's like the power cords being yanked out. As usual, vCenter doesn't immediately realize that it's lost one of its DNSX servers. It takes a little while, around 20 seconds later, vCenter goes out and polls and asks the ESX servers for performance stats. And this is when suddenly we get an alarm saying that we may have a host failure because there's no response coming back from the ESXi server. At this stage, of course, vCenter's not really sure what's going on. The thing that's in control is the HA agent on that surviving ESX server, and it's doing its test to identify whether it needs to start an HA process, whether the other node in the cluster has failed, and whether the virtual machines need now to be recovered. This is entirely done by the agent on the ESXi server, and in that 20 second update cycle, vCenter catches up, and it does sometimes take quite a while. You can see that after about a minute, vCenter has realized that one of the nodes is, has failed and all its VMs have gone with it. So you'll see that there are still 25 virtual machines running on the surviving node. That means that there are 58 virtual machines that need to fail over. I'll speed up the video a bit so you don't need to wait, but as vCenter goes out and polls the remaining ESXi server, you can see the virtual machine count climb as the VMs are registered on the surviving node and they're then being powered on. For about four minutes after I powered off the one node that had 58 virtual machines running on it, all of the VMs have failed over. They're all registered on the surviving node and the power on process has begun for all 58 virtual machines. Now all the VMs you'll see have that amber warning on them. This is from SimpliVity saying, hey, the data files for this virtual machine are not being stored redundantly, in addition to HA warnings. The SimpliVity warnings won't go away until the second node is returned into service and then data is synchronized between the two nodes and, and fully up to date. So it's really important, of course, to bring back that failed host. Hopefully it's down for routine maintenance rather than having been attacked with a chainsaw. So what did we see? We saw a catastrophic failure of one of the two nodes in the SimpliVity cluster. It triggered a vSphere HA event and recovered all of the workload virtual machines. All 58 virtual machines on the node were booted up and operational without any human intervention in a few minutes. This is why we want vSphere HA, and as you can see, it's fully functional on the SimpliVity platform. This has been Notes for Engineers. I'm Alistair Cook. Keep checking back for some more videos. I've got a few videos about SimpliVity coming up, and as well as looking at the back catalogue of all kinds of interesting video. Take care.